Welcome to video 2. Finally, we're going to get into actually using Cave Editor. When you load your game, it'll populate a list of maps on the far left, next to a list of tile sets, then sprite sheets, and finally backgrounds. The last two lists are useless since they only allow you to use Cave Editor's built in image editor, which unfortunately is pretty awful. If you select a tile set from the list, right clicking one of the tiles will allow you to change its type. I won't go into detail about every single tile type, but know that 0 to 1F are background tiles, 20 to 3F will not be rendered by the game, and 40 and above are all foreground tiles. Tile sets should be 256 pixels wide, and a maximum of 256 pixels tall. Back at the Cave Editor main menu, selecting a map on the left opens a new window, the Map Editor. Two important menus are found under the Map tab, those being Edit Script, which we'll come back to later, and Properties. The Properties menu allows you to change various attributes of your map, such as its size and background. The caption is the name of the map seen by the players, and map name is the name of the map's files. For the NPC tile sets, you should know that each entity, or character, is only set up to use either one slot or the other. Generally, map enemy tile sets go in slot 1, and boss tile sets go in slot 2. If you're unsure, look at where Pixel put them in his own maps. You may be tempted to use the Add Map button in Cave Editor, but I'd really suggest you avoid this. Having too many maps can cause unpredictable quirks, and it's not even guaranteed to work. Stick to replacing existing maps. Let's begin by making the first map of our new mod. Open the first map of the game, Pens 1, and use the Rectangle tool to replace all the tiles with blank ones. Next, use the Entities tab to delete all the entities on the map. Now that we've got a fresh start, let's begin placing some tiles. First, we'll draw a nice little house for our character. There, doesn't that look nice? Now we're going to right-click the map and choose Set Start Location. That way, the game knows we want to start here when we begin a new game. Now, the game uses a special script called TSC to handle events, like cutscenes and message boxes. Each map has its own script, as well as there being one global script that has events that can be used from any map. To edit a map's script, let's use the Map tab to open it. As you can see, the map already has a script of its own from the game, so let's delete that and start over fresh. When you begin a new game, the first event that runs is number 200, so let's write that in right now. First, we start the event with a key command to prevent the player from moving around during the cutscene. For reference, the pre-command is similar, but it also freezes time. Next, we open a message box with MSG, write some script, and then pause until the player presses a key with Nod. Another line of text, wait, and then we close the message box with CLO, fade in from a black screen with FAI, and end the event. It's important never to forget the end. With that done, we can save the map, close Cave Editor, and test it out. And look, there's our first event and our brand new room. We're well on our way to being the greatest modders ever. However, as you can see, there's not much we can do in here. So let's go back to the editor for now. Opening up the map again, you may notice that there's a distinct lack of entities. Let's put a treasure chest in the middle of the room to give our hero something to fight with. Select the Edit Entities option, and then right-click on the map and hit Add Entity. This will place an entity with no attributes on the map, ready to be shaped to our brilliant vision. Firstly, select the Type drop-down and pick 15, Treasure Chest Closed. Now, below the Entity Type are three important values. Entity ID, which should properly be called Flag ID, Event Number, and Flags. You can edit flags by pressing the Flag Details button, so let's do that now. We want to be able to interact with this chest, so choose Flag 2000. PC presses down to run script. Another important thing is that we want the chest to remain open after we use it. To do this, we'll actually use a separate entity for the open chest. To make this work, select Flag 4000 disappears when flag ID is set, then save your flags. Now we need to give our entity a flag ID. The entity ID or flag ID can be any number from 100 to 7999, and this number corresponds to a flag set by the script, which we will go over later. 
for now, let's go with 100 to keep things nice and simple. Next, we need to give our chest an event number. This relates to one of the events in our script. Since we've already used 200 for our entrance script, we'll set this one to 201 to keep things nice and neat. Of course, if you want, you can set it to something different. Now we're going to open the script editor and write a script for this chest. First, we have an FLJ flag jump, which will prevent the chest from opening twice once we flag plus, FL plus, flag number 100. Lock input, message, pause, clear message, then the CNP command, which will change entity 201, our chest, to type 21, an open chest. AM plus adds weapon 2, the polar star, to our inventory, and GIT, graphic item, shows the weapon icon in the middle of the screen. After that, CMU changes the music to the fanfare, TUR makes the next lines appear instantly, and then we use the WAI to wait for the song to stop before continuing. After the player presses the key for another nod, we must clear the message again and hide the item icon, showing one last message, and then RMU to restore the music and end the event. Quite a bit of scripting for one simple chest, but with practice it will all come naturally. Now, to finish it off, we need to place one more entity, the open chest that will appear every subsequent time we load the map. This should be an entity 21 with entity ID 100, event number 1, and flags 2000 and 800. Place it directly on top of the other one, and this will make an open chest that appears where the closed one was when flag 100 gets set that runs the global empty event 1 when interacted with. Our room is almost finished now. We just need a way out. Place a door entity on the map with flag 2000 and event 202. This one doesn't need an entity ID since we won't be doing any flag related things with it. In the script editor, we'll write a basic transport script to make this door usable. A much simpler script than the last, we'll start by locking player input then we use SOU to play the door open sound. The next command, ANP, animates the door to make it appear open. A semi-complete list of character animations can be found in ANP.txt, linked below. Finally, we FAO to fade the screen to black and TRA transport to map 2, where it will run script event 92 once loaded and place the character at the coordinates 1010. Some side notes about TSC. A flag can either be on or off. Entities with an entity ID can set their own flag when the player kills them, so be wary of that. It's important to always keep track of your flags, because the editor won't do it for you. Keep a list. Documentation is the key. For a more complete description of the various TSC commands, refer to the modding guide linked in the description. Another important point is that all numbers must be four digits long, including leading zeros, and your event numbers must be in order. That means you can't put event 202 before event 200, or else the script won't work. Additionally, don't use any event numbers below 90 on your own scripts, or else you'll run into conflict with the global script file. So, with that done, we've created our very first room for our new mod, and even written some scripts for treasure chests and doors. Master these basics, and you'll have learned everything there is to know about Cave Story modding. Now go out, experiment, create, and make me proud.